Okay. God bless America. And America bless God. <clears throat> Indeed. Amen. Well, brothers, today we're going to read Romans chapter 16, the very last chapter of the book, the letter, I should say, written to the Roman church a couple thousand years ago. And we're reading verse 1 through 16. And it can be found on page 795. Yes, in some Bibles, indeed. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, uh, let's pray. God, um, your word is so rich. Thank you. Thank you for this letter which is really not just a letter to the Romans but a letter to us thank you for your awesome truth north star and a compass in these dark times we surrender our hearts to you this morning Lord to hear your voice your perfect and true voice to us, your sons. We love you, Lord. Amen. 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 Okay, let's go for um, maybe two readings on this one. Who can I get for a second? Take a second. Thank you. Number two. Okay, verse one. Now I commend to you our sister Phoebe, who was a servant of the church in Sancria, so that you may welcome her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints and provide her with whatever help she may need from you. For she has been a great help to many, including me. Greet Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their own necks for my life. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. Also greet the church in their house. <laughs> Greet my dear friend Eponidas, who was the first convert to Christ in the province of Asia. Wow. Greet Mary, who has worked very hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my compatriots and my fellow prisoners. They are well known to the apostles, and they were in Christ before me. Greet and Pleiades, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and my good friend Stachys. Greet Apelles, who is approved in Christ, and greet those who belong to the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my compatriot, and greet those in the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena, and Tryphosa, laborers in the Lord, and greet my dear friend Perses, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother, who is also a mother to me. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobus, Hermas, and the brothers and sisters with them. Greet Philologus. <laughs> and Julia, and Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the believers who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. Shh. 
Sean's got a, looks like he's got something going on over there. He's plugging in his stuff. Ah. Man, it's quite the, uh, quite the laundry list of names, isn't that? Um, while John, while Sean Jew's getting ready, um, Dan, you, you mentioned yesterday, you said, um, something I was reminded of when I was reading this. I wonder how big the church was in Rome, what it was like. And this is, this is like, um, Paul, like opens up the hood and lets us see underneath the covers and some of the community there in Rome, some of that church community. It's pretty cool. Yeah, there is a list. He knows a lot of people there, which is really interesting. Sean, you want me to read, or are you ready? You're muted. Oh, no, you're not. I'm, I'm having issues with my headphones, but... Uh, we, we can hear you. I, I, I just won't use them. Okay. All right. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a servant of the church in Sancria. I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints and to give her any help she may need from you, for she has been a great help to many people, including me. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. They risked their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. Greet also the church that meets at their house. Greet my dear friend Epinetus, who is the first convert to Christ in the province of Asia. Greet Mary, who worked very hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junius, my relatives who have been in prison with me. They are outstanding among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampliatus, whom I love in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow, our fellow worker in Christ, and my dear friend Stachus. Greet Apelles, tested and approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my relative. Greet those in the household of Narcissus who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena and Trypho Tryphosa, those women who work hard in the Lord. Greet my dear friend Persis, another one, woman who has worked very hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother, who has been a mother to me, too. Greet Athencritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermas, and the brothers with them. Greet Philologus, Julia, Nerus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ send greetings. Okay. What's standing out this morning? This is a really interesting passage. Yeah. It shows it was a, quite a caravan headed to Rome first. <clears throat> but what I found interesting, keeping in mind the culture of that day, and the position of women in the background and men always in the foreground, the first thing he does is commend Phoebe on the top of the list to the people to say, treat her right, which you have to assume is extremely unusual that mm -hmm. the, the women were even mentioned and because they are, they were first. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? That's so cool. My notes say that 
she well not not probably but possibly carried the was the carrier of the letter oh nice but that's conjecture that is interesting though i didn't think about that i think she's mentioned elsewhere isn't she in romans um why do they think that? It's. I thought it was mentioned somewhere. Priscilla and Aquila have been mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Phoebe was mentioned in Acts at some point, too. I'm. Gonna, I'm just going to ask. Did Phoebe carry the letter to Rome? Yeah, on Priscilla and Aquila, they were they were the couple <clears throat> that Paul stayed with in Corinth. I think his fellow tent makers, Jewish tent makers. Mm-hmm. He stayed with them. Uh, he worked with them in the market, making and selling tents. Right. Um, Acts chapter eighteen. The very beginning of that chapter, it says, After this, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. There he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontius, who had recently come from Italy, maybe Rome, with his wife Priscilla. Ah, yes, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to depart from Rome. So this was the expulsion of the Jews. So they were originally in Rome. They'd been expelled, so they were hanging out in Corinth living there and working there. Paul approached them, and because he worked at the same trade, he stayed with them and worked with them, for they were tent makers by trade. He addressed both Jews and Greeks in the synagogue every Sabbath, attempting to persuade them. So yeah, he met them in Corinth because they had been expelled. And it looks like they had gone back by this time. Isn't that cool? Okay, yeah, so on on Phoebe being the carrier of the letter to the Romans, um, It says, given the, this is chat GPT, given the context and the nature of ancient letter delivery, it is widely believed that Phoebe was entrusted with the task of delivering this epistle to the Roman Christian community. In the ancient world, the person who delivered a letter often acted as the sender's representative and might even have expected, been expected to explain or expand upon the contents of the letter when delivering it. Wow. She would have been the preacher. <laughs> wow. Visiting. Yeah, visiting visiting preacher. Welcome her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints. So yeah, it was, there was, Paul was requesting that they honor her presence. She's been a great help to many. Well, yeah, you keep reading that and it says, and that you help her in whatever matter she may need. That's a, that's quite a charge. You go, Will. On the next, on the next one uh, with Priscilla and Aquila, something that stood out to me was at verse four. You know, uh, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus who risk their own necks for my life, and I wonder what he's referring to there. Was there something that happened in Acts in Corinth? <laughs> Um, I mean, if they, if, if 
Paul stayed at their house and he was they were basically coming after him. He was a fugitive yep. at that point, you know. Mm -hmm. They were risking their lives to keep him safe. Right. And if they got caught, you know, they might face the same fate. So you're thinking the the persecution he was receiving from the from the Jews, from the Jewish leadership. They were they were Jewish mm -hmm. and they were risking their lives, their livelihood by allowing him to stay with them. Huh. What else? Why but I got I perked up at the mention of this guy Epinetus as the first convert in Asia. I don't know why that piqued my interest, but yeah. That's a big deal. <laughs> um, first convert in Asia. Um, where was Asia back then? What was considered to be Asia, I wonder? The term Asia in the New Testament typically is the Roman province of Asia, which is now known as Western Turkey. It includes important early Christian communities such as Ephesus, Colossae, Colosse, Laodicea. I wonder how he I wonder how he came to the Lord. Epinetus mm -hmm. the first in the area. I, but just, I just counted the people and there's twenty six in the list plus <laughs> and their families or mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. So this had to be whatever, thirty five to fifty people traveling in one group. I mean I hope they wired ahead for reservations and hotels because it, you know, it's going to take the whole upper floor just to put up with them. Do you think they all met in the house church from Priscilla and Aquila's house church? Also, well, it says number verse five, also greet the church in their house. Based mm -hmm. on that, it sounds like it's like a, um, they had their own house church with, with a group of people but the other people he's referencing, I'm assuming, are maybe outside that house church. Yeah. yeah. And maybe picked up a, a couple here and there just on the way from different churches. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But, yeah, you think about back in those days when you had to walk, that was, was a lot of people. Um, was it Priscilla and Aquila that were fellow tent makers? Is that what yeah. you yes. said, Damien? Yeah. So it's like... I I envisioned like you know when it says their house church it's like if they're tent makers they live in tents they're <laughs> they're the ones that are putting up you know on their travels putting up everybody's tent taking it down you know helping mm. them do that so it's like a traveling traveling uh uh caravan circus yeah, yeah think of a like a motorhome caravan kind of thing these days. Who knows? Maybe they made those ones down at DIA. <laughs> I wonder. So are you are you talking about when they traveled from Corinth to Rome, to to return back to Rome? I think so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, they probably would have stayed in their tents. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them, Priscilla and Aquila. Hmm. 
So what's the distance they traveled? Well, Corinth. Look at my map here. Corinth was in on the uh, eastern side of Gre um, Greece, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, in in the Aegean Sea, um, and then all the way on the so if you traveled across Greece to the western side and then across the Ionian Sea into Italy and then up the coast to Rome which is about halfway up the coast of Italy on the shin of the boot or maybe the knee um, that's where Rome is 760 miles according to Google Maps we can drive it in 19 hours is it Oh, drive it in 19 hours. So that's mm -hmm. if you take by by um, land. If you take, yeah, if you take the highway that that's there now. Okay. Yeah, so you would have to, can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. So Cor Corinth is there. So, you, so if you went by land, you'd go up and around into Rome. But if you went by water, you'd probably go this way and up through these straits and then up to Rome. Many days. Even, even if we assume they went by water, because Paul traveled a lot of times on board ships, that's still a, a long time consuming journey. I mean, that had to be, it, I would think, at least a month because it takes a while to get across. Wow. And, the, and even traveling by ship, the amount of preparation that has to go into that. You know, if you travel by land, it's like you can, you know, pick up resources and things like that, provisions along the way. But by ship, it's like there's... Know where you can go. Know where you can really stop. Hope the wind doesn't change. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Speaking of that, I was just reminded of how Paul got to Rome mm -hmm. and how he and everybody else on that boat all, almost died, <laughs> except for the grace of God. <laughs> Man, I, I just I was just reminded of that story. Well, guys, um, maybe just as we're wrapping up here, we just spend a little bit of time in silence with the, with God. Um, haven't done that in a while. Would that be okay? okay? Yeah. I'll just pray us into that time. Lord, thanks for this um, this word. We just take this moment out of our time to, to really honor you, Lord, and focus our attention on you, Jesus, in your face. Just to be with you. To receive your love, to give love. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, God. Okay. Any final thoughts before we wrap up? Just kind of meditating on on Paul's example here, and I know it happens quite a bit in the in the letters, but just how he you know shows us an example of you know calling all these people out by name, you know praising them showing his respect for them, honoring them in kind of a public, public way. Hmm. Um, just how I was, I uh, read something, it was like the, the 30, 30 second, can't remember what the actual term was, but like in the first 30 seconds of like, talking to somebody or interacting with someone like within that 30 seconds you should say something encouraging to them um cool. but like just kind of applying that you know to my life and being more more aware of of the people that you know i, I work with and interact with either at church or home or friends family co-workers and just you know and even if it's in some small way just to kind of honor them and encourage them or you know even call these people out that that have helped you along the way that's awesome i want to do that That's a good challenge. Wonder if I can. I wonder if that is possible to do that. Like today, go to work. And then just as you're engaging coworkers. I'm gonna try it. Me too. I'll report back tomorrow. <laughs> And I'm, I'm today. I'm going back to Boulder for, for this academic study that we're doing. And there's been some, some struggles. And yesterday, one of my coworkers went down, and they had some challenges and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna challenge myself just to encourage everybody on the team and, and kind of show this kind of honor and respect to them it's the 30 second honor challenge love it all right who'd like to close us out today i read dan's lips i'd be happy to perfect thank you dan because the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath our feet. I read Indeed. that too. Indeed. <laughs> Let's go. Lord Jesus, thank you for the day. Who you are for all that you've done for us. When you think about the struggle of these people that we've just read and the, the long haul that they have done to spread the word so that we too, centuries later, might be drawn closer to you. And thank you. Be with us, lead us, guide us, and protect us this day. It's in your precious and holy name, the name of Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Have a great day, guys. Thanks. Thanks, you too, Dan. Yep. See you guys.